The first order differential equation, m of x and y plus n of x and y dy dx equals zero, or m of xy dx plus n of xy dy equals zero is said to be homogeneous type if. When written in differential form, dy dx equals f of xy, there exists a function g such that f of x and y can be expressed in the form g of a single variable y over x. If the function m of xy plus n of xy dy dx equals zero is a homogeneous equation, then the change of variables y equals vx transforms the equation into a separable equation in the variables v and x. Man, what's this guy writing? Shoot. What is it, Matt? Is he writing upside down? Math by... Oh, math by fives. I love this show. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be great. What's this guy doing? Is he doing differential equations? Whoa! Those are differential equations. Yeah, it looks like um, he's trying to do homogeneous differential equations. It looks like he's trying to separate these guys. I don't know if it's separable. Hey, wait, I think he knows a trick. I think he's going to make a substitution. Yeah, it does look like he's, it looks like he's going after um, the substitution for y over x. Yeah, that's a special case of the homogeneous kind. Uh-huh. Sure, so there he goes. He's writing y over x for everything. I think he's going to make a substitution now. And he makes that usual substitution. Here he lets v be y over x. And why does he do that? I think he's doing that because he wants, um, oh, he's going to try to get the differential out of that too. Oh, this guy's tricky. So yeah, he gets the differential dy dx. Yeah, and then he has to use the product rule on the right-hand side. So he's using the product rule. Oh, there he goes. Right. All right. So now he makes that substitution. Slick. Plugging it right on in. Sure, he replaced his dy dx with um, dv dx x plus v, right? Because um, that's what he found it after he differentiated both sides with respect to x. And then on the right, he's replacing all of his y over x's with x squared. Oh, this guy's slick. Now he's going to get all of his v's on one side and his x's on the other? Oh, man. Why does he want to do this? Oh, because after he made that substitution, now it's separable. Okay. All right, so now what is he going to do? Ooh, looks like he's going to separate his differential, and he's going to divide and factor at the same time. He pulled the v out of that expression on the right-hand side and then divided by it. Yeah, sure. And on the right, he had 1 over x dx, because he was separating the dang thing. Whoa, so now he's taking it over on the side. Hey, wait a minute. Let me get out the way. This guy's hand is huge. Whoa. Oh, sure. Yeah, all right, looks like he's using partial fractions. That's one of the techniques that you use to integrate these guys. Right, so since the denominators were linear, right, he puts a constant on top, and now he's adding those two fractions. I think he'll probably line up his um, coefficients in a second. Huh, looks like he's stepping a skip. Right, he added his v's, and he distributed in appropriately. Yeah, all right, so then that's all over that common denominator. And now he can match up his coefficients, right. So a plus b is equal to zero. Hmm. I wonder where he got that. Oh, okay. He's matching it up with the the v term, which wasn't there, so he put a zero times v. Sure. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> Niceness, right? Because that constant was one. Whoa. Back on over here. Sure. Now it looks like he's taking those partial fractions. Yeah. So he writes on on in there, right? He decomposed them. Right. Fancy term. Yeah. Um. Why did he do that? so that he can integrate, or at least have something that he knows how to integrate. Right, logarithmic, right, very rhythmic. And then on the right-hand side, that one's going to be easy. Didn't have to do anything. He's integrating both sides. Watch out. So the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals and vice versa. And turns out both of them are logarithmic. Yeah. Oh, 
This is good. This is good. Right. Okay. So he integrated both sides. I wonder what he's going to do now. Combining those logarithms, he says the difference of logs is the log of the quotient. Wow. That's good, right? Because he wanted to combine those logs before he subbed back in. Right. Otherwise, you're going to get some nasty exponentials when you E it up. What are you talking about, E it up? I suppose he'll probably do that after he back subs. So he's putting that back substitution in there, right? Wait for it. He replaced all of his Vs with Y over X, which is what he originally had. But he had to make that substitution in order to make this thing separable. Right, because you had functions and, um, yeah. Whoa, excuse me. Right, so now he's over there. Yeah, um, wha what is he doing? He's cleaning up that complex fraction. Sure, if you want to see a video on that, go ahead, go to his YouTube page, and in the search bar, put, um, Complex fractions. He's simplifying it. Ooh, it looks like he was going to add them. Oh, wait. He's multiplying both top and bottom by x. Essentially, 1. Why is he doing that? So he can clear those fractions. All right. All right. So on the top, he has y. And on the bottom, he has y plus x. Yeah, sure. Um, whoa. Take it back to the other side. Yeah. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. He just substituted it in there. Slick trick. Uh-huh. And on the right, why did he do all that? Because now I think he wants to get rid of those logarithms. Why? Because he's going to attempt to solve for y. Why? Because the solution to a differential equation is a function for y in terms of x. Sometimes you can't always solve uh, explicitly, and you can leave it in implicit form. But if you can solve explicitly, do it, please. Yeah. Oh, now he's eing it up. He's exponentiating both sides. He's chasing the property where um, e to the natural log of the argument is the argument. Right. So um, there he goes. There he goes. What he does on one side, he does on the other. It's the first of his golden rules. So he exponentiated both sides. Ah, look at that. E to a constant, right? Ooh, he's using the exponent property that if you have a to a sum, or a base to a sum, it's the product of those bases to each individual term. So now we eat it up. Right, right. Ooh, yeah. Uh-huh. No kidding. Sure. That got rid of our logarithms. Hey, now he's employing the definition of absolute value. He says if x is e whoa, I'm in, kinda in the way there. Shoot, that's the original part too. Yeah. Um right. The definition of absolute value, it's gonna be positive stuff or negative stuff. So then he's back on over here. Mm-hmm. Why did he do that? He did that so that he could get rid of the absolute value bars. And he's gonna do that by putting plus or minus e to the c. Wait for it. Wait. Oh, there he goes. Yes, e to the c. Perfect. Now, wait a minute. That's kind of nasty. So now, um, he's making another substitution. Because e to the c is a constant, and a constant could be positive or negative, he's going to replace plus or minus e to the c with b. Whoa. Whoa. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah. Back over here. Yes. Down here. Whoa. This is all moving so fast. Yeah. All right. Sure. So, now to make it look nicer, he's made that substitution. xb, not by scion, by differential equations. Sure, um, now he's going to do some algebra. He's going to clear those fractions, distribute in, try to solve for y. Mm-hmm. Get all those y's on one side. Oh, come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. He's distributing in. Oh, no. Ah, there he goes. Um, now he's getting all of his y's on one side. Why? Because he's going to want to factor it out. Um, 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 yes, factors, whew, this guy factors good, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes, go, 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 come on, come on, come on, finish him, finish him, I wonder what he's gonna do, man, I wonder what he's gonna do, he usually does as a box and a flower, hmm, box, <laughs> oh, this guy, Oh, looks like he's stating that his constant is what it is.